Ryan here, and I'm here with a unique ship from Medieval Shop. Uh, I'd like to do a special shout out to them. They always take very good care of us over at Medieval Shop Australia. Uh, he sent me a sword. He thought I was going to be extremely excited about this one. I moved me hanging out with uh, Roland Barzeka up at uh, Ausfolk Viking Martial Arts in Egan, Minnesota. And I'd like to thank uh, Arthur Von Eschen again for that wonderful trip. And if anybody would like to, go buy uh, Patreon. Uh, if you have, have uh, donated a dollar or at least a dollar throughout the years, you'll be able to see a lot of that footage, and it's very, very entertaining. Uh, it's all the raw footage that's unedited. Eventually, I will get some of that edited out and get it on actual uh, YouTube. And you can also, uh, tomorrow, I believe, it'll be coming out, you'll see the Spear video where Roland and I test a male shirt. And believe it or not, we have some mail in this ship right here as well. I'll be showing you in a second. Uh, but this sword is one of the features of what he shipped me. Uh, it's a type south, like a type 14, pretty much. Uh, it's, it's about 26 inches long. He calls it the French Shark Sword. Very much like a blade that would be used with a buckler style. Uh, where you could use it. Uh, it's got nice point control and good cutting. You have good ability to cut with it. So, uh, I mean, I, I can see this be a good blade to test out. You can use it in thrusting, you can use it in uh, cutting. It's also remnants of some of the, the type uh, 12s that you have in earlier century. It would have been used for the bucklers or kind of a small shoe. Uh, if you want this one to be used first in a video, be sure and type down below as usual. You can always vote on these things and uh, I will try to tally it up and figure out which sword to start with first. Second sword, as we go down through the centuries in my mind, uh, as a historical sword, this is a non-commissioned Confederate officer's sword. Uh, yes, it's more of an ornamental or decorative sword that they wore at the time to show their status. Uh, but this is still a functional sword. It has a good edge on it. It's uh, very much like the uh, cavalry saber we tested, or the uh, back sword, but it's much lighter and elegant. It's more of a small sword. Uh, it'd be great for thrusting in that style of fencing, and yes, it could be used in that style of combat. Uh, it's not much as a cutter as it is a thruster. Y'all would like to see this one first. Uh, we could do that as well. Uh, it says CSA on it, Confederate States Army. Uh, there's not really surviving examples of this style of sword, but this is a nice representation of the ones that they do. And uh, we don't do fantasy blades very often, but a lot of people are going to recognize this right off. This is a functional version of the sword from 300 King Leonidas' sword. And yes, it looks like a, a combination of a copus uh, or a falcata style sword, but a copus, a, a, a Greek copus, uh, and a falchion. And I'm expecting, since it's EN45 steel, and it has the same characteristics of a later century falchion, or that style of cutting sword, because that's what it is, is a cutting sword or, or, or a cleaving sword, it's going to function very much like uh, on those type of blades. So if you want to see it, even though it's a fantasy design, uh, with a beautiful ball, I mean, this thing is well made in leather. Oh, I love the smell of the leather. Uh, if you want to see this one first, be sure and uh, write that down below. We'll test it on one of our analog gel heads and everything. I think it's going to perform exceptionally well and give us an idea of what these cleaving swords can do on levees and lightly armored people. I think they will cleave you in twain. Anyway, last but not least, because I love mail, everybody knows that, we've done all the mail testing, I have this Aventail. Uh, it very much could be used for a bishop's collar if I want to put a, uh, uh, some type of a drawstring or some straps to it. But I will lay this on just to show it. Very, very beautiful. It would attach to your helm like this. Uh, the Aventail idea is so you don't have a full point, but you still have a neck protection. If you were to use it like a bishop's mantle, you could also clasp it like this. But it's very nice mail. Uh, they know over a medieval shop that I love period mail, and this very much looks like the examples that we have seen at the Oakshot Institute of actual period or historical mail. Uh, it's riveted in solid rings. They're all flat rings, though, unlike my mail halberd that I wear of yarn in most of the videos. Anyway, uh, we will maybe do some testing with this. This is more of a gift, I believe. But uh, you know me, I would probably do that. I'll probably do something with it. Uh, anyway, make your votes down below. I uh, hope you are excited as I am about testing these out. And uh, as always, Farvel.